Greetings and salutations, I am technically not a technician, and in today's video we'll set up Star Trek Voyager, the arcade in Technoparrot. We'll first configure the game to demo using a mouse and keyboard, then let's move to a gamepad, and when done, let's move over to the Sindon light gun. However, before we continue, I do have these legal requirements. This video is for educational purposes only, and is only intended to show you what I've done and what my results are. If you choose to modify your systems using this or any other information I've provided from any video or content I've created, you do so at your own risk. I, this channel, or any person connected to this video will not be held liable for any choices you make with your hardware or software. Modify at your own risk. This does not look favorable. The Borg, the crew of Voyager, and this video all do have some assumptions. We assume that you've installed Techno Parrot and have legally acquired the needed supporting game ROM. If you've not, please don't be concerned, as I happen to have a step-by-step -step guide showing you how to install Techno Parrot, and I'll be linking to it above and in the description. As far as game ROMs, you'll have to provide your own legal game dumps. This channel does not support software piracy. Please do not ask this channel for ROMs or to link to ROMs. At no time will anyone from this channel or associated with this channel provide game ROMs to anyone. With all of that out of the way, let's get started. I'll first expand a folder to the right side of my screen, as I'll need this window to navigate to my ROMs folder in the root of my Techno Parrot directory, and I'll also open and expand to the left side of my screen, my favorite zip utility 7-zip. Once 7-zip is open and expanded, move back to the right side window and navigate to the area where you store your ROMs. As stated, mine are in my Techno Parrot directory, but feel free to use any location that works for you. When opening the compressed Star Trek Voyager ROM, you'll see one folder listed. Simply drag and drop that folder into the area where you store your ROMs. This took my hardware about 32 seconds to do. Everyone's time will be different as we are all using different hardware. Once done, let's close both of these windows, and let's start Techno Parrot. Once Techno Parrot is up and running, look for the hamburger menu at the top left side, and click on it to expand to a larger menu. Once the new menu presents itself, look for and click Add Game, then scroll down to the Star Trek Voyager game, make that selection, and once done click the Add Game option from the center right menu. When done, we'll get kicked into our Games List menu. Here we'll wish to verify that we have Star Trek Voyager selected, and once verified, select the Game Settings option from the center right menu and open the Game Settings menu. Here we'll wish to select an executable, and to do so we'll first click on the top line, directly under the Game Executable selection. After you click on the line directly under the Game Executable, you'll be given the option to select the executable associated with the arcade, and you'll also be given a helpful hint in the associated executable's name being listed to help you find it. Once you've found the correct file, select it and click on Open to make that selection. Now we'll change the arcade settings by selecting the free play option, and then let's make some changes to the visual settings by matching the resolution of the game to that of the desktop. When looking, we find that we have a resolution of 1920 by 1080 p So in our setting under resolution, we'll change the width from 640 to 1920, and in the height section, we'll change that from 480 to 1080. I'll also be selecting full screen from the drop down menu under display mode. Once you've made the changes you need for your build, simply click Save Settings, and you'll be backed into the previous menu. With the game settings out of the way, let's move to the controller setup. The first thing that I'll do is select the drop-down menu that is associated with Player One Light Gun, and I'll be selecting the Windows Mouse Cursor. Next, and not that we need to as we've set this cab up for free play, but I'll set Coin 1 and 2 actions to the 5 and 4 keys on my keyboard. Then we'll move to the reload button and assign that action to the right mouse button, and the shoot action will be assigned to the left mouse button. Let's go ahead and launch this arcade cab and give it a demo so we can verify that it is set up and working as designed. The launch process took a little over 45 seconds on my hardware. Please keep in mind that each cab we launch is different, and everyone's using different hardware, and because of this, all of our boot times will be different. I will be fast forwarding this arcade boot to help save time. As you can see, the game launched without issue, and when I first launched this arcade, I wanted to see the Attract Mode demo. Well, I wanted to see the demo, and I needed a little extra footage. A few items I did notice, 
I believe the original game had an aspect ratio of 4 by 3 because the default image resolution was 640 by 480. However, the resolution we've set of 1920 by 1080 has an aspect ratio of 16 by 9. I'm not sure, but I think Techno Parrot simply stretched the image to fit the screen. Does not look favorable. However, I could be off. Let me know in the comments if you think I'm right or not. Let's transition into a live demo, and right off the bat, I've got to admit, this arcade puts you right into the action. The Borg start beaming onto the ship faster than you can eradicate them. Because the action starts so quickly, you really get immersed in the arcade. It makes for a great experience. I also enjoy that I get to see characters from the Voyager crew. Getting to see the crew come to life and the ability to interact with them during gameplay is a great deal of fun for me. I also got to meet the lead designer of this arcade, Mr. Brian Collins. He's one hell of a nice guy. If you've not heard of Mr. Collins, please note that he's got a ton of arcade titles under his belt. And most importantly, he informed me that in this game, depending on your in-game actions will depend on what direction this game goes. Basically, random actions like accidentally destroying a terminal or maybe letting a Borg escape, will change the direction of the game. In theory, with these, unknown in-game triggers, you should never have the exact arcade experience twice. This is a great demoing experience. However, it's obvious I'd benefit from the aid of crosshairs. So we'll back out of the game and back into the game setting menu, and we'll enable the crosshairs and allow crosshair scaling. By the way, I've no idea what crosshair scaling is, and I'm totally assuming that I need it. Regardless, once all my changes have been made, I'll click on save. Then I'll test these new settings by relaunching the arcade. To save some time, we'll get right into the demo, and as I'm sure you all can see, we don't have crosshair. Yeah, I'm not sure what's up with that. Regardless, these settings did not work as we do not have crosshairs, and not having crosshairs makes my heart sad. Let's exit the arcade and look around in our settings one more time. Rechecking the settings, I'm not sure. I can see anything keeping our crosshairs from working. This may be a resolution issue. It could be some corrupt file, there are a few things it could be. It still makes sense to me that for the crosshairs to work, I'll need to have those options enabled. So I'll keep them enabled for now, and I believe I'll uncheck the hide cursor option. This should at least give me an idea of where I'm pointing my light gun. Let's launch right into an arcade demo, and as you can see, we still have no crosshair, but we do have the mouse cursor, and even though a cursor isn't ideal, that's better than nothing. With these options, I was able to have a playable experience, but let's move over to a gamepad. For the gamepad, we'll wish to enter the game settings menu, and at the top in the area that it says input API, we'll wish to change it from raw input to a direct input. Once done, simply click on the save option at the bottom. Now let's move to the controller setup menu, and I'll program the coin 1 to the controller. I don't need to, but I'll program the coin 2 to the keyboard's 5 key. Then we'll program the X and Y axis to the gamepad left stick, the reload button to the gamepad's B button, and fire will be mapped to the gamepad's A button. When done, we'll save these settings and then launch the arcade. So let's be blunt. When started, I found that both the start game button and the fire button were responsive and worked as I expected. However, my X and Y axis did not work well and seemed to need to be calibrated. I am sad to say that getting into the service menu to make any calibrations doesn't seem to be an option. I don't know if that's because this cab had no service menu, as I've never seen this cab in real life, or if we simply can't access it because that element isn't available with Techno Parrot. Instead of speaking about what didn't work, regarding the gamepad, I'd like to try and save some time and just speak about how I got my gamepad working. In short, I used a very handy free program called Anti-MicroX. It's freeware, and it lets you bind your gamepad to your keyboard and mouse. I'm going to take my gamepad's left analog stick, and I'll use the open source software Anti-MicroX to bind the X and Y axis of my mouse to the X and Y axis of my gamepad's left analog stick. It's not a complex process. However, the steps to make this happen are more than I wish to get into for this video. That all stated, if you'd like to learn more about Anti-MicroX, I have a detailed video regarding the subject, and I'll link to it above and in the comments. Once back in Techno Parrot, verify that you have Star Trek Voyager Arcade selected, and check that you have the raw input option turned on under the input API area, then confirm that hide cursor is unselected. Once done, hit the save option below, and you'll be kicked back into the previous menu. Let's now jump into the controller setup menu 
where we'll find that I've selected Windows mouse cursor as the player 1 light gun. I'll then bind the reload button to the controller's B button, and I'll then bind my in-game attack to the controller's A button. When done, we'll save our changes, and then let's jump into a demo and see how these controls do. As you can see, this works, but I feel it's far from really playable. The cursor is a must, as the crosshairs are still missing in action. Because of the way we have to configure the gamepad's analog stick, we're very slow to aim and change direction. It's so bad that I'd now like to move to the Sindon light gun, and I'm praying for better playability. I don't wish to get into the Sindon light gun software, as that really needs to be its own video. As with Techno Parrot, I will assume that you've got the Sindon light gun set up and working. I'd also like to say that this is a different PC with a newer CPU and not a great, but a better video card than we had been using in our previous demo PC. You will need your Sindon light gun software on, your controller connected, and when active, start the Techno Parrot software, and let's click on the game settings menu so we can review those options. Let's expand this menu so we can see better, and first let's verify that we have raw input selected in the input API section. We've got free play turned on, and we've matched our desktop and game resolution. If you're unfamiliar with Sindon Tech and its accompanying software, please note that the Sindon controller is using a camera and the white box around the screen to orientate the mouse cursor. When active, it does make navigating the screen a bit of a pain in the butt. Next we must verify that window mode is turned on, and you can always enable or disable the mouse cursor for better aiming. Once you've verified your settings, click on the save option at the bottom, and we'll be kicked back into the previous menu. Let's now move to the controller settings, and let's see how we've got the Sindon controller set up. Under the player one light gun section, we've got our Sindon selected, and I've got my reload bound to the reload action on my Sindon controller, my fire key is bound to the Sindon's trigger, and I've got my coin bound to a random spare button on the Sindon controller. I don't think I need the coin button bound, as we are in free play, so I've no idea why I am, I just can't seem to not bind it. Now that we've got setup out of the way, let's boot the cab and jump right into a demo. I can say that this build did not load the crosshair, and even though hide cursor is enabled, I'm still seeing the cursor. I'll not complain too much about this, as it really does help aim. Other than that, the cab demoed very well, and I had no issues with any of the gameplay or controls. I did give the game a few tries, and as Mr. Brian Collin explained, the game does change with each play. The graphics do look great, however, I do believe that this is a stretched full screen image to a widescreen image. Some may think I'm being picky, and they may be right. Regardless, I'll not let the image keep me from enjoying the demo. All I'd really say is that you can tell the image isn't quite right. In conclusion, regardless of the small issues with my controller setup, this game may be a light gun sleeper. The graphics look great, gameplay gets you immersed in the Star Trek Voyager universe, and each playthrough is a little different. I've got to say that the gameplay change up with each play really added replay value to this cab. And replay value is something that is missing with many other arcade cabs. All in all, the design team did very well and hit it out of the ballpark with this unit. If you've not checked out this light gun cab, you need to give it a try. If you've made it this far in my video, I'd like to personally thank you for checking it out, and please know it means a lot to me. I do hope that you enjoyed it and found it informative. If you did or even if you didn't, please consider liking this video, leaving me a comment, hitting that notification icon, and if you've not done so, please consider subscribing to the channel. Each of these actions is nothing more than a click of the mouse to you, but to this little channel, those small clicks help this small channel win the YouTube algorithm war. Thank you.